on, which only means one thing. Today is a writing vlog. The thing is, the day is over. <laughs> I've turned the light on in the back, and I think this actually gives a lot better lighting than just the um, lamp. So let me know what you think, if you like it. I think I like it for now, until I can get a ring light. I wanted to tell you what it's been on my mind. So the last time I wore these actually was kind of funny. Um, it was to tell you about the my dilemma with the writing count and how I feel like it's so long. So I went through, I, I went through history. <laughs> I decided to just go through history of all the books that have ever been created, all the genres, all everything. I know generally fantasy and sci-fi tend to be longer because it requires more world building, um, just in general. Fantasy books tend to be longer and science fiction because there are more things to consider. Um, but the thing is, like, I, as you know, the only thing you know about my book is that it is a thriller. So, you want to give enough to the reader to help them put together the puzzle without telling them everything. But at the same time, in my story, uh, I can't really explain much about it, but there are a lot of moving parts. It's not necessarily... so the setting in which the story takes place, it's very... I'm just tr I'm trying to explain this and I might have to edit stuff out <laughs> just in case, but I'm trying to explain this in a way that it, that hopefully you'll understand what I'm trying to say, um, without giving anything away. But basically, there's an overarching plot that consists mostly of the main character and their journey throughout the story, you know, as all stories have an overarching plot. But then there are smaller subplots, um, with different characters that are going through different things, and Everyone has a story, you know, every person, I know that most supporting characters, you know, supporting characters are not as important as the main characters, and some characters are just kind of almost background characters, but every character has a story to tell, they have their own kind of way they view the world, they have their own motivations for why they're there, what they're doing, and you know, um, how they view the world and whatnot. And <laughs> the story that I'm telling, it's like, there are flashbacks. There are flashbacks in the story as well that tell one particular character's story. And that character is extremely important. <laughs> extremely important. And then um, there are... So I do... I do prioritize those. I prioritize also the main plot, but the subplots, those little smaller characters that don't seem to really be as important, but as the writer of this story, they are important to me. And I think I've been agonizing myself about the word count because I'm thinking too much. I'm a Libra, okay? <laughs> I love to make everyone happy. But this is like my story. It's not my story, you know, it's not mine. I did not experience any of the things that the characters are going through, but you know, this is my story in terms of I'm writing it. Like I created all these people, I created their thought processes, I created the place, like I created everything in this story. And we're I'm never gonna see these characters again. This is like a one standalone book. <laughs> and it's not about the flowery descriptions. It's not about the excessive use of adjectives or any of that. Because if it was, it would be so much easier. <laughs> it's literally like, there are things I omitted in the first draft because I, I, I was just getting out the overarching plot of the story. But all these smaller subplots are interwoven throughout it and I really want to expand on it just a little bit, just a, a little bit. <laughs> Even if it means like a thousand words that I didn't need, 
I want to tell the story of these people, like all of them, because they're all important. They all have their own way of thinking. And psychological thrillers, you know, you are in the mind of the characters the majority of the time. Like, you're hearing their inner monologue and how they speak to themselves and what they think of the world around them and how they process, <laughs> you know? And um, that's why I wanted to write a thriller because I'm, I'm super into the mind. Like I have the DS, I really, I literally bought, <laughs> I bought the DSM-5 just so I can write this book. Like I'm really committed to the mind and how people think and you know, what goes on in there <laughs> and you know I really want to expand more so I did some research because that's what I do I'm an intellectual <laughs> so I did some research on different books throughout history and there are a lot of books that were successful though most of them are classics there were a lot of books, and even nowadays, there are a lot of books that were really successful that I found that ended up doing really well, but were really long. Although they weren't fantasy books, they weren't science fiction, some of them were thrillers, some of them were just literary fiction, some of them were... And I think it should be up, I, I've been following this arbitrary kind of, you know, checklist of what the literary agents, what the publishers and all those people would say. But then I'm reminded that we are all divine creators of our own reality. We can have everything we want, you know, and when you're caught up in the 3D, I guess. You kind of just, okay, what is the rules? But you can make your own rules. And for me, like, what I love about writing, I'm an INFJ, by the way, so this is probably why. What I love about writing is that I can create any story I want. All these characters, like, they serve a purpose, and I'm the one giving them the purpose, their purpose in this world. Um, like, I'm Kira, but my death note is not to kill people. It's to bring life to otherwise lifeless form. <laughs> A lifeless form. I'm trying to just trust myself, and even if it's unconventional in terms of the genre, um, this is a story that needs to be told. Like, I got an idea for the cover. I'm not gonna go into it, because... <laughs> It's too much, but I when you see it though You'll see it and you'll be the first to see it actually so it'll be fun, but I can't really go into it right now But I got the most amazing idea for the cover of this book I'm gonna try to have it traditionally published and I'm affirming that they're gonna let me do everything I want <laughs> um, Because I do I'm an artist too. I do have quite a, an eye for art and design so they're gonna let me do everything I want with my own book. But anyway, so, you know, I'm, I got this idea for a cover and I visualized it, I see it in my mind, like, it's become so real for me. And it's just, I'm like, I need to write this story, but I've been stopping myself because of the word count, like of all things. <laughs> The thing about it, and it feels a bit patronizing, um, if any of you guys can relate in terms of being a writer, when you read these articles about what your book should have, what not to do, it's, it's kind of, it's very limiting. And I'd rather break all the rules and end up with a book I'm proud of, even if it doesn't sell as many copies or seem as marketable as people say. Um, it's always the books that break the mold that actually end up bringing in more success, that end up bringing in the ones that, like, you know, don't, the ones that defy all odds, you know? <laughs> the ones that, like, they took a risk 
and it was a risk worth worth it because this story it's not just a thriller it's a thriller but it's not just a thriller and I know right <laughs> my story of course it's important to me it's my baby and every author feels that way about their own book but or at least I would hope so <laughs> but um it's not just a thriller it's it's more than just you know a string of strange happenings and then there's a culprit and then there's you know there's death and there's sadness and there's darkness in people's heads in this story and but it's more than just that <laughs> There's a deeper meaning to all of those things in the story itself. And even the smaller characters, though they don't seem as important, they still move the story along. Um, I think my book kind of fits more in literary fiction than it does in genre fiction because the characters are moving the story. Um, the plot itself, <laughs> it's a plot. It's interesting. It's a hook. There's a hook. There's something to be like, oh, whoa, there are stakes. The characters are what's really driving this story forward. The plot is just a thing that is happening in the background. It seems like the plot is the background. The characters are the meat and potatoes. <laughs> what the characters are thinking and how they interact with each other and how their thoughts are literally shaping the world around them is kind of what I'm after in this story. And I don't know if all my stories will be this way, but at least for this one, that's how it is. And I'm just, I'm learning as I'm writing more and more, <laughs> I'm learning that I should trust myself. <laughs> I should just trust myself because, you know, to get a little spiritual, I guess your it's like this light is like guiding me you know it's my higher self i guess for lack of a better word it's you know a divine being taking over my hands and just typing away and writing away and that's when i feel most happy and i don't want to you know fit myself into a box where People are saying if you're a debut author, which I kind of am, <laughs> you know, I did poetry before, but those are just, that's just poetry. So technically in terms of novels, I'm a debut author for this story. And when people just kind of try to fit you into a box, and I'm an INFJ, I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> I don't like having to follow someone else's rules. That's part of why I'm a writer, because it's a creative job. And I need to have, I need space to stretch my wingspan. <laughs> my spirit animal is a raven, so I need space to stretch my wingspan. And that's why I love writing, because, you know, I create a story and everything is the way as it should be. And I, <laughs> here I am trying to have like a deep conversation with you, like a really wholesome moment. And my mom's in the background just burping away. <laughs> But yeah, um, I like I like to have the freedom to do what I want to do because what is life if you're not free? Like, living for someone else, like, that kind of life never appealed to me and, you know, I've always said that I'd rather take the traditional, harder way of doing things, like, you know, but still living life by my own terms and doing the things that I want to do that make me happy and writing makes me so happy <laughs> so part of that i mean like i'm i'm this whole word count debacle <laughs> i'm just kind of letting it go <laughs> i'm gonna let it go i'm gonna stop trying to fit myself into this tiny box when like i feel like a, a bird in a cage like i have to just spread my wings and let myself fly <laughs> you know so yeah that's what i intend on doing um 
and that's what I was thinking about today because I was doing a little bit of writing and I was like, and I was just thinking of the cover, I was thinking about all the things and I've made a realization and I'm glad that I can share this with you. Maybe some of you were struggling with that too. Like, at the end of the day, if it doesn't seem conventional, maybe that's a good thing. At the end of the day, if it doesn't fit the mold, maybe that's a good thing. I have to trust myself and I have to tell the story that was given to me through my, I guess, <laughs> brain, my light being, my light body. I don't know where these ideas come from, but <laughs> my divine inspiration, I guess. Like, I have to just trust my inner guidance and I guess that's kind of what the characters in my book are also going through as well so maybe there's some deeper reflection going on <laughs> as I'm writing this. I'm going through my own kind of what I want for myself and you know the themes of this book is about freeing yourself from captivity you know in a way like <laughs> I guess <laughs> how whales are all looked at in aquariums and, you know, it's unfair to just have them in this little box when they belong in the ocean where they can freely just do and live and be as they are meant to be. I feel like that. <laughs> I want to just metaphorically swim in this ocean of words and like lose myself in it. And even if it's not considered conventional by society standards or by industry standards, I'd rather do what makes me happy. And maybe it'll pay off whether or not it does. I've already, I, I feel like living in your truth, living in your happiness is worth all, all of it. It's worth all the risk. So yeah, I don't know if some of you needed to hear that. If you're going through a similar situation or maybe if you were just watching this writing vlog because you watch my writing vlogs, but yeah, that was the writing vlog for today. Uh, should I do a self-care shuffle? I don't really feel like I need to today. I think you got the message that you needed to hear. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna, it's now pretty late. Um, I'm gonna get going. I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.